In this video, I'm going to be talking about terrain that other people have made with the Hex Terrain Toolkit. Um, it's been out in the world now for a couple of years or so. Um, so there's been plenty of time for people to do their own thing. Uh, and I think it's quite interesting to see other people's take on, on Hex Terrain, get some ideas from other people. Uh, so this first picture, this is um, a frost grave setup, which was built by... Um, one of the kicks at the back is called Elia, who runs a terrain making company called Mastercraft of Worlds out of Boston in the USA. So this is this was one that really threw me when I saw it first, because it's just unlike anything I had imagined people making with the toolkit. Um, so he's gone to a lot of um, fine detail work on, on flagstones. You can see on the blue-grey road, he's got a repeating hex pattern that's um, etched into the surface, and that obviously works well for where the hexes meet up against each other, so you get this continuous pattern along the surface. Um, and then on the, the kind of the flagstones on the, um, the pavement or the sidewalk, you might call it in the USA, um, each of those, you know, there's some slightly varying shades used on the, on the stones, flagstones, which I think works really nicely. So I'll, I'll post a link to uh, Mastercraft Worlds in the description, so you can check out their other work, they do some amazing stuff. Um, and they do take commissions, I believe, so have a look, particularly if you're in the USA. Right, this next one is a woodland scene by, um, again, one of the original backers of the Kickstarter called Ronnie Tucker, um, who's in Glasgow in the UK. So I really like some of the stuff there. The, the riverbanks, I think, are brilliant. Uh, that kind of broken up look with the with the rocks and see how the, the edges of the um, those riverbanks, some of those rocks kind of Straying out into the into the river itself, which I think does a lot to reduce the sort of repetitiveness or regularity of the of the river shapes. I think that works really well. Um, one thing I think I would improve here would be the painting the sides of the hexagons. So because polystyrene here is, is I guess kind of a white or something like a bit of blue, light blue, um, and that combined with the it's got a green undercoat for the grass. It, it kind of makes the, the edges of the hexes stand out too much. Even the what you know, the hexes are butted up against each other. You can see those those gaps stand out much more than they than they ought to. Um, but that's an easy thing to go back and do afterwards to you know, paint the edges of the, the hexagon, even after you've textured everything else if you, if you want to. Uh, I know this this picture was from Ronnie's very early progress. who just wanted to show how he was getting on, so I do appreciate that. Uh, the other thing is um, for my hexes. I kept the the grass sort of very neat and and simple, and there were a few reasons for that. I did that at the time. Um, I was really trying to work on getting this as versatile as possible, being able to mix and mingle. And I was worried about creating any patterns, and I think in retrospect that wasn't such a concern. Um, and the other thing was that I wanted to have my when I was had the uh, Kickstarter in mind, I wanted my terrain to be a sort of I guess bland in a way, you know, um, so people could kind of project their own ideas onto it. Whereas if I'd gone for something that was very hyper detailed, or I'd put an awful lot of work into, people might think it was either beyond them, or if it was too specific to a particular scale, or something like that, then uh, they might think it wouldn't apply to them. So if I, for instance, I was building mine to twenty-five mil. Um, for Lord of the Rings, which I was gaming with a lot of the time, then somebody else who was building, to use interest in 6mm gaming, would think, oh, that's not for me. We want something else. So it was in my interest to, at the time to keep things very plain. But I was always tempted with, with having more um, more interest, you know, more foliage and that, and that sort of thing. And you can see here in, in Ronnie's image, on his terrain, he's, he's used quite a bit of cum foliage, particularly around the water, water's edge. Where in nature, you always, you always get a lot more stuff growing at the water's edge. So because of the extra supply of water, and um, you don't tend to get animals grazing as much, or people walking as much right down near the edge. Um, so yeah, I think that looks, that looks really good. Adds some bit of interest and realism, it breaks up these, these big grass surfaces, particularly for something like fantasy, where we're not talking about mown grass here. This is meant to be the wilds, really. 
next one here I've got is um, this is a, the first time that I saw a full size battlefield made of the toolkit. Um, and you can see this, this is pretty much filling a, or very nearly filling a um, full battlefield size gaming table, or several gaming tables. And uh, this, is, this comes from Funk Force from Winnipeg in Canada. Uh, and this is for Battletech, he was using it, um, and that's a smaller scale than the, the games I was building for, so the roads, for instance, are narrow and already built on my hexes, which is cool. There's, you can see there's a building um, compound there, and for that one he's, he's glued five hexes together and built the, the compound on that, so the building will spread across, because he, want, he wants a building that's bigger than just the one hex, so it made sense to glue some hexes together and keep that permanently as one thing. Uh, how about those, that rocky, um, that rocky cliff pass? That's really cool. Uh, so you can see how the the grass transitions up onto the cliff, and that's one of the things I think that's um, you know that one's a blow by and trumpet. I think this is one of the things that this hex system does better than any other um, modular terrain system I've, I've ever seen. Having the, the cliffs be merged into the, into the terrain, not just sort of something that's plonked on top. And I think that shows shows really well here. And you can see, you've, on particularly on that um, raised area on the left of the of the image, you can see how sort of cliff most of the way around, and then you've got the this grass is slowly leading up to it. And that looks really cool. Uh, the next one is so again from the same the same person using very much the same terrain. There's you know there's a few there's obviously there's two building um, compounds there. But most of these hexes are clearly the same ones from the other shot. Just completely different setup, so you can see how versatile this can be, when, especially when you've got this many hexes. Um, of note, that you can see there's the this double height, or you know, double dot cliffs. So you've got one large cliff area and a small cliff area on top, which seems perfect for for battle tech with with those mechs getting up onto the really high ground for for their sort of sniping like um, long range fire. So that was cool. And then the next one, this is um, a little while later at uh, Legion 2019. And you can see that this is a like a proper gaming table. Uh, that river, I think, looks brilliant, really fantastic. It's, it, looks, it just looks like sort of an industrial river, like the, the Roar or something. You know, you know, we can imagine in all kinds of industries and dams and hydropower running for a river like that. Um, so um, when they're setting this up at the convention, they said they got a lot of attention from people. Um, and even once they were playing, the people were, they had to pause the game quite a few times to you know, answer people's questions and explain how the hex terrain system works. So people were really fascinated to see this. Um, something which, you know, this is, this is an altogether new thing at, um, at the conventions. So, yeah, generally I can't tell you how thrilled I was to see somebody. 5,000 or so miles away, making some really high quality, convention quality terrain, using the, the toolkit I designed in, in the back room. So the, the last one uh, I was going to talk about was this. This is some 6mm terrain, or rather terrain built for 6mm wargaming. World War II Normandy was the principal intention for it, or, or anywhere in sort of northern Europe. And this is built by, and I have to apologise for my pronunciation here, but Martin Honkoop um, in Papendrecht in the Netherlands. So Martin has, um, as you can see, he's done a lot of uh, terrain making in the past, or you can imagine from this quality that he's done a lot of terrain making in the past. And he's built this with um, using a Proxon table cutter, table wire cutter. Which a few backers, in fact, the first one I showed you, the, um, the one by Master Crafts Worlds, the Frostgrave terrain, that was also built using a, a table cutter. So you can you can use the toolkit with a table cutter. There were a couple of modifications, which um, which they, they both had to make, I think. Uh, and I'll, I might shoot a video on that at some point. Um, yeah, so you can see that there's, on this picture we've got... Uh, 
you know, a house and an outbuilding. We've got a little farmyard, walled farmyard. Um, some fields, so the fields go across multiple hexes. And all of this was, was built with the with his wire cutter, so all those buildings he made using the hot wire cutter. Uh, a lot of the buildings he he made sort of in advance of the tool kit arriving. Um, uh, as it happened, I was I was on holiday when he put his order in, so there was a, a couple of weeks delay before he he got it. So he, uh, he managed to make an awful lot of buildings in that time. And here's another shot of his with uh, with a river. Um, and yeah, I think that river looks brilliant, really, really good. I love those those reeds in the, I guess the slow moving parts of the water, you know, on the edges of the, of the stream. He's got a nice bridge there going over the, um, taking road across. Well, as bridges normally do, taking roads across rivers. And you can't see it so well, but at, right at the back of the river there, the furthest end of the river, you got a, um, a water mill, a little water wheel, some sluice gates. So brilliant stuff and. Um, yeah, I know Martin's still working on this hard. Uh, he's done a lot more terrain since he's made a brilliant churchyard. Um, so he's mounted his, his church up on a sort of a low... Because the church is, as with some of his other bigger pieces, are mounted across multiple hexes. So to make it stand out a bit more, he's, he's mounted up on a, like a low hill with some steps leading up to it. Um, and in the middle of a, of a town, I think that just looks brilliant. Really um, makes it stand out. It makes it look more of an integrated town, rather than just a few, you know, a few houses um, dotted about. Um, so yeah, I shall post a link to Martin has a blog, where he's which he's been regularly updating with, um, with his progress. On this uh, on a six mil terrain. So yeah, those, those are all the images of um, people who sent me. If if you have been making anything with your hex terrain, and you've got any. Um, anything to, ready to share, any photos to share, uh, please get in contact um, via YouTube or um, via the web shop. So I've got a link to the web shop um, in the description. And uh, also on the web shop I've added a, a new gallery page with these images on and any others I get. So you can pop there and, and have a look on the gallery. Okay, hope you found that interesting. Thank you.